Hi, and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. As you all know, who are members of our community, we really focus on um, food security, self-reliance, and emergency preparedness. And one of the most important things about self-reliance and about food security is knowing that the equipment that you use um, are all proper enough to, and in this case, we're going to be doing pressure canning, and so we're wanting that equipment to be able to bring the internal temperature of the food in the jars up to the kill zone in order to destroy botulism spores. So this is um, the last one in the series that we are doing on individual videos showing how we tested the Presto Digital Canner. And so even though I've already released the video that says the overall results, we are also going to be releasing these individual videos so that you can um, see how we do this part of the testing and learn a little bit more about how to use the Presto Digital. And so we will get started on that when we come right back. on safe canning, we really appreciate it if you would share this and help get the word out so that a lot of people are uh, really curious about the Presto Digital. So hopefully we'll have positive results at the end. I don't know how this is going to turn out because I have not uh, tested this previously. We're going to be doing five quarts of pinto beans and we're going to be following the manufacturers um, instructions to a T and we are also following the USDA guidelines. So in order to do pinto beans, the first thing we had to do was um, soak these beans overnight. And so that's what we did. These have been soaking overnight and now we need to drain the soaking water. So I'm going to do that with my pan here and just pour it right in. Look at the starch at the bottom of this pan. I'm going to do a little rinse. And the next step now is to cover these with water and then bring them to a simmer and simmer them for 30 minutes. Now, I want to tell you why, while I'm filling this up, the USD wants it, USDA wants us to do that. Um, the reason to pre-soak the beans and then simmer them for 30 minutes is to bring the beans up to the point where they um, are thoroughly hydrated and they have reached the size that they're going to be at the end of the whole processing so that we do not overfill the jars or underfill the jars. A lot of people just start with dry beans and can dry beans just from the dry state. And um, that's not what the USDA recommends, so that's not what I do. Um, I am using my Cuisinart, this is a spaghetti cooker pan, and um, if a lot of people love this pan and want to know the information on it, and all of the information on uh, the equipment that we get requests for is posted on our Facebook page. And I put the Facebook page link uh, right under the description of all of our videos. But I do want to um, in assure you that we make no money on, if you buy this, great. We do not get any kickback on this at all. Uh, Jim and I made the decision when we first started our channel that we were not going to accept sponsors and we were not going to sell any of the equipment that we use. For us, it is an ethical issue and, um, and it may not be for other people and we do not judge anyone else who may do that. But for us, we do not make any kind of a kickback on anything that we show you. We want to be free to give you our opinion without you thinking that, oh, they're just doing that so that they'll make money on it. So that is not the case at all. All right, I'm gonna put these on the stove and bring these to a simmer. And after they have simmered for 30 minutes, we'll come back. 
beans started simmering just a few minutes ago and I've already had one boil over because I wasn't watching it close enough so I had a little mess to clean up. Got it going again so they probably have about 15 minutes left um, before we need to turn the heat off. Meanwhile, we're gonna go ahead and start the canner on the warming cycle. That's what happens first. So I have five quart jars. I already have three quarts of water in the bottom of the canner per the manufacturer's instructions. So I'm just going to put these um, five quarts without lids into the canner and uh, then we do the warm up cycle. Down. All right, I did it, yay. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I tried to do this backwards. So we're gonna go ahead and um, lock this in place and then I'm going to be removing the regulator because we're not wanting pressure in the pot at this point in time. So the screen says, pressure can and we have our jars in here which I always do a little bit ahead of time so we're going to advance it and this says plug in the time for the processing and so um, quarts of pinto beans that started dried yesterday um, so that's what we look at here are 90 minutes for quarts so we're just going to rotate this to 90 and that's good so now we advance it and it says Insert jars, done. We can advance it now, and it is warming. So it's gonna warm. This means that it, the heating element is going. And then um, by the time uh, these jars are warm, our beans will be ready to put in the jars. And so we're dovetailing activities here just a little bit so we don't have to wait for this, and then we get our jars. So we're overlapping. And it took me a little bit to kind of coordinate things like that. So. Uh, this is a good demonstration of how we can dovetail things. So we'll be back when the jars have completed the warming cycle and the beans are ready to put in the jars. The canner just beeped twice telling us that the warming cycle is done. And because we have no pressure in here, we can just go ahead and open this. And the jars are nice and warmed up and they have hot water in them. So I'm just going to grab them and one at a time, empty the water out, and we're gonna fill them with these beans. I have learned that dipping into food that is immersed in, immersed in water is better than draining them. Besides, we want this bean water. That's what we're going to be putting in the jars. Um, it doesn't damage the beans nearly as much as when you try to dip down into food that has been drained. Okay, just, oh, I thought that was a crack, but it was not. Just a few more here. So I'm going to dip into this bean water and we're going to fill this up to within one inch. Then I'm going to debubble and this is just a plastic picnic knife. It has serrations so I'm putting the handle end down so there's no danger of the serrations nicking the jar. I'm going to wipe the rim Place a clean lid and band, finger tight. The jars are very hot because the beans were boiling and I'm gonna put these right back down in here. And the next jar, yeah, the tops have cooled enough that I can handle them now. The next jar is going to contain my data logger. This is my data logger. It is a piece of scientific equipment, which of course is never cheap. Um, on our website, I do have the information from the, for this. And what you have to do on our, not our website, our Facebook page, um, you have to just scroll down until the picture of what it is that you're looking for pops up. So this information is there and I'm going to put this, it, it, it takes the temperature in the, the probe, tip end of the probe. So the probe is gonna be right in the middle of the food, which is exactly where we want it. And it will record that temperature in its little mini computer inside here. And then when the processing is done, I take this to my computer and um, download the data and we'll show you that at the end 
of the video. Okay, so we're going to carefully pour the beans around that logger. We want that logger to stay in place. And getting the bean juice. bubble leaving an inch headspace wiping the rims lid ring and because this has my data logger in it I don't want to forget which one it is so I'm going to mark it with a blue X And in it goes. So we will come back when the rest of these are filled and ready to go and I'll show you the next step on the canner. The jars are completely filled and in the canner again we're going to just put the lid on. This time we are waiting for it to vent. And so it vents for 10 minutes but first it has to get up to the proper temperature. I still have the regulator it is off. And so uh, we'll put that on right before the actual processing starts. So let's advance our arrow and get it to the venting stage. And heat is showing, so it's going to heat up for a little while and then um, 10 will show on the screen and it will count down 10 minutes of venting time. And when we reach the end of that, we will bring you back and then we'll show you how to get the processing actually started. That beeping is telling us that the venting is done. And you can see the venting isn't anything like a regular pressure canner. And I'm not concerned about it. There's steam coming up from the vent um, pipe here and also from the airlock right here. And it's all good. So now we need to go ahead and advance to the next uh, process, which is can. And there's our 90 minutes of processing time. It's heating up again. Now, that 90 minutes of processing time will not start until it heats up some more and gets it appropriately hot inside the canner. In order to do that, we need to have pressure in there, which means we need to put the regulator on. When you put the regulator on, watch out for these steam holes. Don't burn your fingers. Keep your fingers off to the side or use a hot pad. And when you put it down, this arrow right here needs to go over the word can, as opposed to vent. So, we're good to go. This will take probably about two hours because we let it do a natural cool down and then we'll take the jars out, I will retrieve my logger, download the data, and I will show you the data uh, before we end the video. So, see you in a couple of hours. The processing has finished, the cool down has finished, Right in this little crack here um, is the airlock, which is right down here. And sometimes, even though the processing and cool down has finished, that airlock stays up. So be sure that you wait for that to drop all the way before you attempt to open it. So it is open, and so now, I mean, it has dropped, so we can go ahead and open. And here we go. I smell pinto beans. Well, they are beautiful, and we should start hearing some popping right away. Here is the one with my data logger in it. Now, the way that I remove that data logger is I don't wait for this to cool all the way. I fill up a sink with hot, hot water and put that down on its side in that sink and open it up and retrieve the data logger. And sometimes some liquid uh, blows out from the jar, but since it's under water, it doesn't burn me and it's fine. If you want to see that process, you can um, look at the chicken, raw pack chicken 
pressure canning video that I did in connection with the Presto Digital because I show that whole thing. I'm not going to show that on camera today. So I am going to go ahead and retrieve my data logger. I'm going to take it into my computer, download the data, analyze it, and I will come back and show you the results. So see you in a little bit. I've analyzed the data and before I show you the data sheet, I want to just explain a couple of things. First of all, um, the whole point of pressure canning is to get the temperature up inside the food, inside the jar, uh, to between, according to the USDA, 240 and 250. In Celsius, that is 115 to 121. That's what we call the kill zone. And then it has to maintain in that kill zone. It can fluctuate within the boundaries of those um, borders 240 and 250 but it has to stay in the kill zone long enough in order to kill the possibility of botulism spores. Now there is an industry standard that has been established and so what I do with the data I have to enter the temperatures and I enter the temperatures within that range and only those temperatures. So I enter, um, the, the data are in Celsius, and so I enter between 115 and 121, and then I also enter how long it stayed in that temperature range. And then I plug that into my Excel spreadsheet. It, that's what does all the logarithm analysis, and then it comes out with a number. And I call that the magic number. And it, if I told you the number, it wouldn't make mean anything to you at all, it is just a mathematical number that stands for safety. And so what we are looking for is a number that is at least that number, but I can tell you that the USDA in their testing gets way above that number to ensure that there's a huge safety margin. And so let's see what we've got. Here are the data. And this is for Presto Digital Pinto Beans in quartz. So this is just a part of the curve because the curve is huge. It starts way out here and goes way on. So down here you see the time and my data logger does all of this. This is, I did not enter those. This is data that is downloaded. Here is the temperature Celsius and remember we are looking for 115. So here is where the 90 minutes of processing started. Here's where the heat turned off. And then the pink is the kill zone. So um, the canner was in the kill zone a total of 94 minutes. So is that enough to meet the magic number? Is it ever? It more than surpassed the safety zone for that number. So these uh, pinto beans, I am 100% convinced, are very safe to eat. And the Presto did a really good job. And um, I can also tell you that when I tested the pints, they were also well within the safety zone. So the Presto canner does a really good and safe job just exactly doing it the way the manufacturer states should be done. Um, and everything is safe with pinto beans. So that's good news for those of you that like that canner. And uh, by now, I've already published the results and so, um, You've probably already seen that video, but I'll put a little link to that just in case you haven't seen that video. So thanks for joining us and we will see you next time. Computer, my computer, my computer? What's a computer? I invented a new word. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so I'm going to take it into my computer.